It's been six months since our move to Sofia, Bulgaria, and we've been inside for much of it. But today we have a day off, so we're getting up to a few things. So we're a little bit late to rise, hard for us to get up in the winter, but we're heading out to a nice little restaurant for lunch. And then Jesse's taking us on a tram ride through the forest. And then after we're gonna go to the zoo because there's a whole lot of street out there. So first things first, let's cut to the restaurant. Becky found a nice little place called The Little Things on Instagram, The Little Things Restaurant. And it's kind of tucked away behind a few other restaurants in an old Bulgarian Sofia city house kind of thing. And each room is decked out to have a few tables in it. So it's a real homely vibe. Uh, the, the floors are crooked, <laughs> the plates are chipped, but that's kind of all part of the charm. Yeah. It was super nice. The food was great and the price was about average which is yeah. is good for for a capital city probably the best mm. for a capital city in europe yeah how, how did we, you find your food we always seem to choose the most expensive options as well so certainly you could have gone cheaper but i thought it was beautiful it was homemade cooking in the most complimentary way you can say that it inspires you to think oh i could do this at home i could make something like this I feel like the Bulgarians really have got the art of savory and sweet down. Like the, I had, I had chicken steak with uh, brie cheese melted on the top and then a jus. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, I don't know what it was made of, but it was nice and sweet and it just worked so well with salad and everything else down this way. What did you get? Oh, that's right. So for a starter, we got sweet potato hummus with like a grilled flatbread and a very nice uh, salad with a balsamic glaze. And then the main meal was beef meatballs with kwa. Oh, that's right. Traditional Bulgarian bread and like a sun-dried tomato pesto on top. So then, both, both of our main meals were about 16 lev and the starter was about 12, 13 lev. Uh, 50 lev all up with a, a latte. Yeah, and it's the first place that served us water, just a standard tap water with our meal without um, charging or us having to ask. I thought that was pretty good. So next stop, tram number 10, the tramway that goes through a Sofia park and word has it that it actually slows down so that you can take it all in. find that trams are probably the most uh, relaxing and interesting way to get around the city. The buses are okay as well. Yeah, most scenic. Yeah, they're nice and slow. Uh, usually there's a lot of room on them because people prefer the metro. So this one, number 10, zigzags through the park. But of course, we don't have the best season for it, so it's just dead trees. <laughs> yeah, so dead trees and brown leaves. <laughs> One thing that was really interesting was how packed it was and not with tourists wanting to do a little ride through the park but filled with people just making their way around. I don't think I've been on a tram that has been so busy. 
We are now in one of Sofia's many big parks, Boris Sova Gardenia, this one, something like that. Anyway, Gardenia. <sighs> You're not participating in your stupid videos anymore. A little fun fact. <laughs> There is 2,300 acres of parkland in the city itself, in the city centre. So, to give you perspective, that is almost four times Central Park, just in one small capital city. So you can be in the middle of the forest like we are now, and, fe and feel like being in the middle of the forest, but you're actually in the middle of a capital city. So it's really awesome. There's always somewhere to get away and ride your bike like these guys. So now we're heading to the zoo. Is it still the right way? Yeah. Now we're heading to the zoo. Uh, Becky doesn't actually want to go inside the zoo. There's just a lot of graffiti and murals on the outside. So I'm going to let her do the rest of the video. So she better be ready for that. Are you ready for that? No, I'm not. Okay, that's too bad. <laughs> Like in winter, everywhere is just a scene from a murder mystery. <laughs> just all sets the scene, uh, especially this. Let's flip the camera. Look at that. So what would be the scene taking place here? Oh, I don't know. There's some cult kind of pile of sticks ahead. Yeah. That's some ritual going on. I definitely feel like there's flashbacks. To the girl having run through here in her nightgown and bare feet, don't you reckon? Yeah. Screaming. And look, there's some kind of old structure over there. Rock structure. There's a story about that too. That's where they sacrifice to their werewolf. This is why murder mysteries rarely ever get shot in Jamaica or Tahiti <laughs> except for death in paradise but that's just like a happy show anyway it's not ominous what do you think babe? yeah totally agree with you <laughs> this is the setting where all terrible things happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh look there that's perfect So this is Becky's roundup of the Sofia Zoo in Bulgaria. You only need about half a half a day. I was gonna say half an hour, half a day to do this zoo because it's quite small and compact. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get the light right because of the sun. Keep going. Um, it was a little bit dismal, I think, because a lot of the animals weren't in their enclosures. Whether it's because they're not suitable for a Sofia winter, I'm not sure, or it was their feeding time, so they're behind the fences. But all in all, it's worth a visit. It's only four legs, so good way to spend a bit of your day. And even though the animals are in not the happiest scenarios, they always can make you happy. Animals always have the ability of making you happy. I think that we have enough time to get a coffee and a cake before we head home.
we do, Becky's going to give her impressions <laughs> of the zoo. Okay, so I think that this impression, you have to bear in mind that about 65% of the enclosures were empty. So there were no animals in them whatsoever. It was a little bit glum, but there were quite a few enclosures that were brand new. And I think when they're filled with animals, it could be a really interesting trip. It's quite a small zoo, but it makes for a fun half a day. How expensive? Oh, four lev. Four lev. Four lev. <laughs> Can't go wrong. What was your favorite animal? Okay, so there were hardly any animals in there, but I had eye to eye contact with the leopard. That was amazing and also the i can't remember the name of them they were like wild boars but very very small and there was a whole lot of babies and they were so small they could fit in the palm of your hand so i'll put that on the screen and also my favorite was a cat that i'll put on the screen as well i love the face right now we're at a restaurant and yes. while i while i show the food becky can tell me what it's called do that this is traditional bulgarian yeah. with a a western twist so western foreign twist yeah i think they said with an international twist yeah there we That's go how international um panchitata 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 <laughs> okay 16 lev 16 lev so like eight american dollars and we'll get dessert as well but that's enough for today we want to eat so peace out bye bye bye